We just finished a podcast, and if you haven't checked out our podcasts, you can find a link to them at minds.com slash Colin Flaherty, or go to your favorite podcast app and just search for Colin Flaherty, White Girl Bleed a Lot podcast. Boom. We just did a podcast about uh, violence between violence in schools and how the local media is totally ignoring, denying, condoning, excusing, encouraging, even lying about it. But even but in the podcast, we talked about how every once in a while the problem gets so crazy, so wild that it even exceeds the ability of the media to be in denial, deceit, and and delusion about it. That's what this story is from Baltimore. Because in the podcast, we talked about one story in Baltimore. This is the story we're going to meet the one, the most shell-shocked teacher I've ever seen, I've ever, I've ever heard of. This is the, and, and, and it's a story of a white teacher, victim of black violence in schools in Baltimore. And it's just gotten a whole hell of a lot worse since then. Check out this story. There are some of you who will stay up worried tonight, not because of the weather, but because of what will happen tomorrow. Inside the classroom, we're about to show you the numbers that you really don't want to see. You know, when it comes to our schools, we are quick to tell you how students are victims of bullying, fights, even guns. But in the past five years, an average of four school personnel in Baltimore City Schools is the target of an assault. That's for a day. ABC 2 News investigator Brian Kubler peels back that number and shows us a problem. Many school security experts say it's a very real issue. We're not talking about it until tonight. We first showed you this video back in November. Students at Digital Harbor High School in Federal Hill taunting, bullying, assaulting a substitute teacher at the front of the classroom. Taken with a student's cell phone, this video pulls back the curtain on an issue many simply don't want or won't talk about. Tremendous amount of stress and anxiety. Anxiety, you know, trying to come up. It's like literally, I have to force myself out the door. Baltimore City School teacher Jeffrey Slattery wants to talk about it because he still literally feels it. It was December 2010 at Baltimore Community High School on the east side when he stopped a student without a hall pass. The student got physical and Slattery let him go. He walked down the hallway. I turned around, go back to my classroom. He came up from behind me and you know, once I was on the ground and, you know, he's basically standing on top of me and, and he struck me multiple times. Um, when my jaw broke, I went unconscious and I really don't remember anything after that. He would later learn it took four teachers to pull that student off him. Slattery broke his jaw, wired shut for weeks. He pressed charges and the student was convicted. Slattery's assault by a student was just one of 700 that school year in Baltimore City Public Schools, where its own data shows an average of four school personnel were assaulted each day in 2010. That average holds true through the past five school years, with a total of nearly 4,000 assaults by students on personnel, with noticeable increases in the last two years. Broken down by grade level, it's evident 7th, 8th, and ninth graders commit the assaults more often. Do those numbers shock you? No. As a matter of fact, I'm very surprised that they're that low. Marietta English is the president of the Teachers Union in Baltimore City. It was after this attack on city art teacher Jolita Berry in 2008 when assaults by students raced to the top of mind for most educators. The story went national, fueled by this video posted to MySpace back then. It was the impetus for the union to start keeping its own records by imploring teachers to fill out this form reporting abuse, documentation to lobby for more support to stem this violent tide. They should not come to work fearing that they're going to be attacked. They should not come to work feeling that they're going to be verbally abused. This is not what we should be coming to work and have to face them. The basis. reality of it is they do, though. Th that's the reality of it. Unfortunately, yes. Now, it's very important to note that City Schools defines an assault as the act of simply touching any school personnel. But as we've shown you, some of the instances can be quite severe. Either way, the administration says any case of this is totally unacceptable and launched a program just last year to turn these stats upside down. We're faced with children right now who have problems that are none, none that you could really even imagine. 
um, and to treat them just like we treated children in the 1950s is not the appropriate response. So Karen Weber Indoor came up with a different approach. Borrowing from her experience turning around schools in the city system as a principal, she is now the executive director of student support and safety. In this position for only a year, she decided to focus on what she calls school climate. Change the perception, feel, and environment of a school, change behavior. A core element of this approach is no longer just teaching the material, but training teachers to relate with the students. As we saw the suspension numbers begin to creep up, we realized that we had to do some different messaging to the adults in the building because we're the ones who are in control of what happens in the environment. Um, and as soon as we uh, give that control over to children, well, you've got a problem. It's a problem experts we spoke to say is nationwide and by no means unique to Baltimore City. But Weber Indoor's approach is, already having worked with 32 schools last summer and is set to work with 32 more this year. Her confidence buoyed by already beginning to see what she called a drastic decrease in suspensions in that pilot group of schools. So the messages can be articulated to the adults and adults can be coached in how to have relationships with children. Um, and that's what we're doing as a district. The results of which are beginning to garner attention from other school districts around the country, but an impact for some here at home that cannot come soon enough. I feel that in the long run, I don't know how much longer I can be a teacher. But Jeffrey Slattery doesn't want to quit. He went back to teaching in the city school system just this year. Now diagnosed with a moderate form of post-traumatic stress disorder because of his attack, it is a struggle. There are days I just shut the lights off, lock my door if I don't have any immediate obligations like a parent conference or a team meeting or something of that nature. And I just sit in my office and I just weep, praying to God that I have the strength to go through the rest of the afternoon. You know, and by the end of the day, I'm exhausted. I have nothing left to give anybody. I'm not going to sugarcoat my reaction to this. That sounds horrible. Oh, it is. It's not, it's not an easy life. But the thing is, I love... Why do it? Because I love what I do. A dedication to his profession and his students, in spite of being on the severe end of a troubling statistic. In Baltimore, Brian Kubler, ABC2 News.